some major, major corporation, and I don't know what it was, but this one here, anytime, any place, anywhere, that was actually recorded in Washington in Squirrel's living room, um, and I stole that one. The Don't You Realize by Eddie was actually at a Don Yule recording session um, that uh, wound up first on Johnson McCree's label, and then I traded it from George Buck to put it on, on mine because um, I, I, George owed me some records. And, um, but there's a thing here, Herb Sanford. Herb plays um, things from the Golden Road to Samarkand, and it's, it's a song called Ships That Pass mm -hmm. in the Night. Um, along with East of the Sun was the most famous tune to come from a Princeton Triangle show. So, anyway, Melancholy Mood. That was Bobby playing with Marion that we made here in New York City. And the Panama was taped during the world's greatest jazz band at the Downbeat. The intro was by Yank, blah, blah, blah. But in any event, we managed to get a, a handful of records done that absolutely no one has because they were um, basically just given away. To, to friends, so they're 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 very hard to find. And speaking of records, before we started the interrogation here, um, you were telling me about the Library of Congress. Oh yeah, uh, what I'm I'm doing is that um, there are three to four hundred. I don't know exactly how many of these home recordings. Plus, there are all the tapes. I mean, there are a lot of tapes that. Um, I got from one person or another. And I chatted with um, a very bright young man at the Library of Congress, and they would be thrilled to have them. Um, and so these are all, I'm getting them all organized and, and going to donate them all to the library. And Squirrel, um, Squirrel's daughter, Avis, um, died about a year and a half or two ago. Um, and he still has one daughter, granddaughter, who's still alive. She's out in New Jersey. Her name is Dana, and she's terrific. Um, and she's happy as can be to have all these things go to the library. So what I will do is I will bundle up all of these things, all of the tapes that exist, and um, copies of the records, uh, just so, it, and they can make a nice little squirrel Ashcraft box. And um, I was thinking maybe they should go to Chicago, but I think that they, the Chicago thing is not, um, the Chicago Museum is, you know, sort of privately done, it's not done by an organization or anything. So I think the Library of Congress would have a longer shelf life than possibly a, a local thing in Chicago or New York or anything. Plus, Squirrel spent the last, from the early 50s to the early 80s, in Washington. That's where he was. So I think that would be a nice thing to do and uh, have a, a footnote in the Library of Congress. I think if you put Squirrel Ashcraft into Google, you get something. I don't know exactly what you get, but you get something. And if they're at the library, maybe you'll get one more thing. <laughs> and at some point, somebody will uh, develop a, a process where these funny um, recordings, some of which are, are, are not necessarily in the world's best shape. I mean, some of them are, are things like this, which is called Air Checks, U.S. Recording Company, Washington, D.C. Um, 41938. Um, Sweet Lorraine, Part One, Bob Zerke Piano Solo. Um, part Two, Zerke and Rushton Piano and Clarinet. Now, that I, probably came out. I wonder if that's on here. Because it's in very good condition, this one. Um, the other side is <laughs> Heaven Only Knows. Um, so, um, anyway, and 
these things are, I mean, just, this is China Boy, full band, little distortion. And, you, and see, in many instances, this is in an old Brunswick sleeve, the only thing that's there is that somebody had a little etching tool, and you can, this, this says Jimmy, you can barely read that. This says clarinet marmalade on this side, so clearly this is the China Boy side. Somebody has written good, yeah, this says China Boy. So, anyway, it'll be a, perhaps a, a master's thesis for somebody in archival, this or that. And, uh, but at least they won't wind up in a dumpster. Yeah. In, the, in the ideal world, they would be playable with the Library of Congress's laser, and we yeah, could well, hear them. That's right. And, and that, I mean, in 1968, um, when I start, first started working with Sherman Fairchild, we were talking about developing a laser to play these things. Yeah. Um, and of course, ultimately that happened. But uh, that that's easy technology in today's world, if anybody cares, and nobody possibly much does. But um, anyway, but there's a lot of it, and it's all fun, and it's, um, as opposed to what we sometimes see around us now, all this, this seems just so remarkably innocent and nice and people just sort of having a good time. Squirrel told me one time that one day he, he had invited the entire Bob Crosby band to come out and play at his house on a Monday night. And he was so proud, he said, the first complaint came from three blocks away. <laughs> They were playing so loud. <laughs> he was very quiet and understated. That, that's the way he was. And, um, and he, he would never raise his voice about anything. He was very, and very modest and uh, was a pretty good player. Had he worked at it, which he didn't, um, he um, uh, could have you know, played in a low-level dance band. But I mean, if he if he played, it was he made me think of Frank Melrose sort yeah. of kind of kind of thing. And it, um, it was a. I mean, he he was the kind of guy. I remember him telling me once about when um, his um, his first wife Jane had throat cancer. And he said that it eventually got so bad that he um, that that she could no longer sing. And he said, but that was okay. Uh, she had forgotten most of the words by then anyway. Oh. <laughs> but that's understated. Yeah. And uh, so, and the funny thing was that he had no interest in associating with record collectors, with um, music critics. Or, I mean, he was serious about the job he was doing. I was part of that job, so I had, you know, easy access and stuff. But um, he, he was very reclusive and hard to get to, um, except the old friends from 1928 or 1937 or whenever, um, you know, would happen in, you know, instantaneously. There was no problem with that. He just um, didn't get involved much with the newer music scenes. He liked hot bands that played pretty songs, basically. And um, anyway, and then we'll get all this stuff into a box at the library and see what they do with it. Hopefully, they'll do something. Yeah, it won't. It won't. Uh, it won't decay and uh, be tossed out. That's right. Okay. So, well, thank you, Hank. Thank you for the window. Thank you. Good. Good to get squirrel on tape or something. <laughs>